Week one, more like week fun. Can't wait to get started. That's gonna be it's gonna be a season. It's gonna be an interesting one. Um, preseason went fairly well, and I think we've learned that this could potentially be a difficult season. Receivers dropping balls, quarterback being inaccurate, and we're stuck with them. There were not many great quarterbacks in the draft class, so we didn't draft one. And this is the team for season one. We're going to start with continuing our training camp standout. It is the rookie linebacker out of Clemson, Deshaun Hump Humphreys. Every year there's players who ball out in preseason that don't end up doing anything once the actual season starts. I think you're different, but it's time to prove it. And apparently this cat's never been more ready. Says, coach, I didn't put all this work. That's what I do, by the way. I call people cat. It makes me kind of seem hip and cool. But uh, yeah, he's here to make plays and help the team win. Two plus combined sacks and tackles for loss with Deshaun Humphreys against the Raiders to continue his breakout. We're going to go for it. I like that. Uh, probably going to user him a lot in order to see if we can make that happen. No guarantee on that. But I think it will increase the likelihood of that happening. We'll try to get him playing over Troy Anderson, I guess, in the sub linebacker role. Even though his coverage isn't great, we might be able to make up for it a bit if we user him. And then I am trying to work down to an additional focus player through weekly strategy. So we're going to go ahead here and increase the hiring bonus when signing a defensive coordinator. We've made these staff points... And, and upgrades cost a lot. It's very much. So it's not easy to get up to here. But that's kind of what I want. It, it makes it a little bit slower. And it doesn't become nearly as overpowered. So it's turned down quite literally as low as it will go. And uh, it, we'll see what happens. Of course, we're going to choose an auto-generated class. And let's take a look at the rookies for the first time. There was a tight end inside the top 10. We just drafted one. Fun. And we don't know anything about these guys at the moment. Except for Tracy Peel is the number one player in the class. Out of UNC. We've seen some good pass rushers come out of UNC. More than you'd expect. You go, maybe you could name Lawrence Taylor. But Robert Quinn. Julius Peppers. They've like casually been a hotbed over the past, you know, 40 years for producing stud I'll say even 50 years for producing stud pass rushers. Deion Dobbins out of LSU, teammate of Dante Boston from a year ago, is now draft eligible. A couple of, of pass rushers, even four inside the top five is safety. There's the tight end George Cormier from Auburn. Another North Carolina player, by the way. Very interesting. A couple of tackles in there. Can't find anything about these players now. But all we can do is get new scouts and assign them to these positions. We need pass rush. That's a big issue for us. So if Deion Dobbins or Tracy Peel are going to be good players, we might go in that direction. I like the idea of maybe outside linebacker, defensive end. There's a really good safety in there. But even though we could definitely draft a safety, Will Cox, I can do a lot with that. I mean, like, and Hugh Dick, oh, I can, do, I can do a lot with these names. Just awful jokes. Jerez Forbes. Alonzo Westbrook from Texas. Hook him. All right, Alonzo. Sure. All right. Well, they might not actually be very good. The strengths of the national region, defensive tackle, strong safety, and left tackle. Nothing about defensive end or outside linebacker. I still feel like I'm going to do defensive end and outside linebacker anyway. So we just might not even change. And we still do have to look at quarterback, but this is not going to be a good class for QB. There are... There are none in the first round projected. And they're not going to get better, probably. There are only projected to be two drafted QBs. That is not good for us. But it is good for Desmond Ritter. He might stick around a little while longer. All right, these are aligned as best as I can, or at least as best as I see fit. And just kind of focusing on the strengths of the class, but also positions that we need. It doesn't make sense to do only the strengths of the class if they don't match up with positions that you're looking to draft. And sometimes it is draft best player available. Totally understand that. That's usually what I go by, obviously. That's why we drafted a tight end and a defensive tackle where we did. But 
we are still potentially going to need defensive tackle. We want to go to a 3-4, might fit our personnel a bit better. Drafting another defensive tackle will be imperative. Still need an edge rusher, and that's why defensive end and outside linebacker will remain, I think, our primary focus there. For now, for now. I don't know about 2025. Hopefully, we can kind of solidify some of these positions. And I guess developing Desmond Ritter is going to end up being the big thing. This is not a good quarterback class. And we're going to focus on offense today. You know, the Raiders are a tough team. They have Josh Jacobs, Devontae Adams. And I'm a little bit worried that Jimmy Garoppolo is just going to play out of his mind and really just make it impossible for us to get stops. So we're going to focus on, you know, doing well on offense. And that revolves around Bijan Robinson, our starting running back. Obviously, he was amazing last year. And if we rush for 150 plus yards, we're going to get a nice little boost. And I think our season goal has to be make the playoffs. It has to be. Now, will we? It's tough to say. Seven wins is a little bit more conservative. And I've, I guess if it just comes down to five more staff points, we're going to set it at seven wins. We could be due for a bit of a slump. We only won eight games last year, despite making the playoffs. Are we going to get that lucky again? I'm not sure. So I, I think it's just a little bit better to play it more conservatively. And we'll check out this Raiders team. Of course, we know about Josh Jacobs. He was incredible last year. Averaged even more on the ground than B. John Robinson did. Jimmy G at QB. Might see some Zamir White. Jason Kabinda at fullback. Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, Jacoby Myers. We know about this. Michael Mayer's in there. Offensive line has brought in Jonah Jackson and the rookie Phil Quigley at right guard. Still rocking Jermaine Illuminor. And the UCLA pass rusher Justin Whitfield, I believe, was their first round pick. He looks pretty good. Decent enough speed and acceleration. Finesse moves is fantastic. Leaves a bit to be desired in the block shed department. But yeah, fantastic pass rusher with 81 finesse moves. Bilal Nichols in there as well. Daquan Jones, Max Crosby. Now, I'm not sure Whitfield is the best fit for their 3-4. I guess he's starting defensive end and then going to be a rush end would be my guess. But maybe someone we can run against. Divine Diablo is going to be injured for this game. They have Zach Cunningham in there. Might see the rookie at a Grand Valley State, Gary Westbrook. Of course, Tyree Wilson could also be a rush end. So Justin Whitfield, maybe just not a great fit for them. Got to Kobe Durant now, Jacorian Bennett. Marcus Epps starts at free safety and Jordan Whitehead at strong safety. Of course, our main goal has to be stopping Josh Jacobs. And I don't mind running outside. I think though, it might be better to try to run inside. Although I don't like how it one detracts the other. Double plus to inside run blocking versus double minus for outside run blocking. Might be better to just go throw deep and not get a boost either way. Is that a good idea? We'll, we'll keep run outside. We'll see what happens actually. And then uh, let's get to practice. Let's get some XP for Kyrie Yankee, Neil Madsen, Deshaun Humphreys. NFL debut for these rookies. Let's see what they can do. I still haven't made a decision about who the starting left guard's gonna be. It's obviously either Matthew Bergeron or the rookie that we drafted. I'm leaning Matthew Bergeron just because of the star development. And the fact that he's also, you know, a, a real-life, highly-touted player for the Falcons' second-round pick from this past year in real life. And, of course, I'll just say 2023. So he's somebody that we want to develop. He just hasn't developed really well because he is an offensive lineman in Madden. And even though he's been a focus player for us, even though he has star dev, he really has not been developed pretty much at all. And part of that, I think, has to do with the fact that there are no uh, practice mini games for offensive linemen. It's almost like there's no point to even putting one there. But if you want to develop an offensive lineman, how do you even do it other than that? I don't know. It's a, uh, it's an annoying situation to be honest. And I still hate AJ Terrell in these drills. He's just so annoying. If you try a possession catch, he'll bat it down. But if you rack catch it, he will not jump for the ball. I pretty much promise that. It's not going to be every time, maybe. And I still possession catch quite a bit. But if he's close, I'd probably just recommend most of the time just going for the rack catch and seeing if you, if you can outrun him. You don't want to trigger an animation. So, 
That is my advice to you if you're doing this particular drill. I feel like I give advice on these drills in every episode. If you guys have the game, you've done them enough already to not probably need advice. You're doing just fine without me. Uh, you know, I like to talk you through it. I like to feel that I'm making a difference, even though you're probably all better at the game than me, without question. But this is going to be a big day for Deshaun Humphreys. Two tackles for loss continues his breakout. We're not going to let him pass rush on his own. You know, he, he is really an off-ball linebacker. So it's going to be about making plays in the run game. Recording TFLs on running backs. And Josh Jacobs might make that incredibly difficult to deal uh, to deal with and do. So uh, we'll see what we can do. No promises. But uh, obviously it would be absolutely massive for the rookie out of Clemson if he were able to get an upgrade in development. We don't know what it is, to be fair, but it, it most likely is star. But I think for these training camp standout missions... I do believe you get XP, I want to say, which would, of course, boost his development and kind of streamline it. And it'll progress a lot more quickly than otherwise if he was uh, not. There you go. Well, well said, dude. Oh, man, I, I can't even listen to myself talk. No injuries, please. Defense is fully healthy for week one. And the offense, obviously hoping for the same. The biggest injury we could have is obviously Bijan Robinson. But, I mean, Tyler Algier is a good backup. He's a good rotational guy. And I think we are going to be a little bit more balanced this year. As much as I love Bijan... Oh, it reset my depth chart. So Kyle Pitts will be our starting slot receiver. I might just put Rashid Shahid in there uh, otherwise. Patterson, maybe. Quez Watkins... I don't know what he's going to do yet. He's really just more of a deep threat for me. I'm going to put Algier in there for power running back. Third down, of course, is going to be Bijan. I don't know it, what Cordero Patterson's going to do this year. He's down to 87 speed. So I, I'd love him as a shifty return man. But at the same time, you know, I have my questions about what his ceiling is. Is he really going to be capable of housing some of these? I don't know. Deshaun Humphreys just for today is going to be sub linebacker two over Troy Anderson. As I mentioned, I still want to try and develop him. But for right now, you know, he's 25, normal dev, low 70s. It's a tough sell. It, it really is a tough sell to be like, hey, this is one of our off-ball linebackers of the future. And if we were to transition back to a 3-4, hey, Deshaun Humphreys and Caden Ellis playing off the ball doesn't feel that bad. And then we have, you know, our edge rushers. Of course, Arnold Ebikati is one. The other one, potentially TBD. I don't think we have that guy right now. We, of course, signed Frankie Lubu. He would work better as a 3-4 outside linebacker. And then we would need another player on the interior. Well, we signed Puna Ford, right? He, Kyrie Yankee, and Grady Jarrett could be a decent defensive line. Nothing exceptional, but like we have the pieces to kind of mold this however we want. But I'm so excited to see some of these debuts. We have not seen regular season action from any of the rookies, of course. And Frankie Luvu, Wes Watkins, Rashid Shahid, Preston Williams, Puna Ford. I think that's it. But I'm ready to kick things off. Josh McDaniels versus Gene Dangus. Here we go. Raiders, Falcons, coming up next. And here we go. Nine minute quarters this year. See if we can limit possessions a little bit more than we did last year. We gave up, like, by far the most yards. And I also think we had, by far, the most yards on offense. So, Jimmy G will take the field. We'll see what this season looks like. I'm excited to get things underway. I'm looking for a big year. And we'll face Jimmy Garoppolo. He's talking to himself. He's an insane person. Uh, lock that guy up. Get him in a straitjacket and get him off the field. Although we probably don't want to face their best quarterback, Aiden O'Connell. So actually, on second thought, maybe leave Jimmy G out here. Ooh. Complete to Devontae Adams. They're going to operate uh, here out of gun, I would guess, a lot. Although, now they're straight to a more traditional uh, offense. Graves is playing off the ball. That's weird. I mean, he's fast, but he can't bring down Josh Jacobs. Yeah, I don't know why Graves was on the field in that package. He's not really supposed to be playing off the ball like that. That was a little bit weird. That really should have been Deshaun Humphreys. 
Here they are out of eye form. So maybe we're not going to see a lot of gun. Maybe I, I jump the gun as Humphreys takes out the legs of Josh Jacobs. Caden Ellis in on that tackle as well. They have not actually been back to the gun. Running outside, Arnold Ebicady brings down Jacobs, but he gets nearly enough for the first. Going to be third and one. I think we're going to blitz in this spot. And I like the way Deshaun Humphreys comes down to the edge here. Roy Anderson as well. I think I'm going to like this formation. They're actually going to pass. They're going to quick throw to Hunter Renfro and move the chains. Yeah, the quick game is going to be tough today. I was, I was trying to talk about that earlier. I expect to see a lot of quick passes. And if Jimmy G beats us down the field, like, so be it. But I'm not prepared for that. As Humphrey's going to bring down Jimmy Garoppolo. The rookie gets to the quarterback. There's that tackle for loss. He gets half a sack. And that is a great start to his career. Second and 19 now. I kept talking about changing that helmet, or at least I mentioned it at the end of last uh, episode and did not end up doing it. Now maybe I'm wondering if we just keep it. It looks a little bit old school, like, you know, early 2010s. But at the same time, maybe he's just an old school type of player. Here we go, here we go. go down, make TFLs. I love it. Second and 19 for the Raiders. Probably not going to be a run here, but they run anyway. Congrats on making it third and 14, I guess. Ooh, what is Josh Jacobs' X Factor? Wrecking ball. Got to have him not get that. And they're going to throw Jesse Bates. Ooh, I was going for the big hit on the tight end mayor. But the pass sails over him. And the Raiders will settle for a field goal try. It is Carlson. Had a bit of a rough start to his career. And then has completely bounced back and become one of the better kickers of the league here for the Raiders. I think he had that big miss with the Vikings. But no Vikings kicker can kick outside of Gary Anderson for all but one huge kick. I mean, Blair Walsh actually had a good year too, but is mostly known for brutal wide left misses. I don't know. Kicking is just, it's such an interesting conversation about whether it should be in football or not. It's a little bit weird if you actually think about it. Like, hey, it's all these super athletes going out, trying to make plays, running around as fast as they can, or being really, really strong. And then it's like the most physical sport that there is. You know, think about football, rugby, kind of in that same conversation. You know, hockey, of course, to, to a degree as well. And then you just have a guy coming out to kick a ball. What is it, soccer? I don't know. I have no beef with it, but it is. it seems a little bit weird. But here we are on offense. First throw goes to Bijan Robinson. We get five yards. We're a team that likes to run the football a lot. But if you can throw the ball quickly, it basically counts as a run in the, in the, in the way that the football comes out really quickly. You get three, four, five yards. Worked out pretty well for us. We're going to go read option. Ritter doing a decent job to get anything there. That was defended pretty well by the Raiders. I think the rookie Justin Whitfield was close. Don't know if he made the play. Gonna be third and four. We could actually run the ball here. That is, I mean, would you count that as eight in the box? That slot corner is pretty close. Two tight end set. I told you we'd be seeing a lot of that this year. I, I, I hit A. I hit A. I hit A, dude. Why did we not get the snap off? Well, now we're not gonna run the ball. That's for sure. That's actually a strategic play to space out the field. Kyle Pitt slot right. Maybe a name to watch here. They might be doubling Drake London. Let's see what happens. We're actually going to throw to the rookie tight end. And we miss him. Ritter completely airmails him. He was wide open. Could not connect with the Utah rookie, Neil Madsen. And Drake London saw the ball and made no effort to catch it either. So it's a tough end to our first drive. Obviously, the delay game wasn't great. But we got our look. We had a huge play on the field, and the quarterback just missed the throw. So maybe that's on me. Maybe I held it for too long. But, I mean, we, we got a good look. I don't think the delay of games is the reason we didn't convert. We, ha we had a great look down the field and just couldn't connect. Neil Madsen was wide open. Get to the outside. We lost contain. That's on me, which is Humphreys. Josh Jacobs breaks the tackle as well. You know, I'm so gung-ho to get another TFL so we can continue the breakout of Deshaun Humphreys. But when you do that, and you cut inside, try to get that TFL, you lose contain, you know, you, you lose the edge, and then big plays happen. 
as Humphreys can't wrap up there on Jacobs. Nobody seems to be able to. I can see why he rushed for like six and a half yards per carry a season ago. This guy does not go down as Graves is back to an off-ball position. Caden Ellis looks gassed, by the way. You can see him like breathing. Is that Marcel Reese? <laughs> Jason Cabinda out of the backfield. He'll break a tackle and another and score. Jason Cabinda? This guy was playing linebacker a couple of years ago. Now he's just doing that. I mean, a bad angle from somebody, right? But still multiple broken tackles. AJ Terrell, Caden Ellis, and the Raiders take a 10 point lead. We gotta run the football here. Read option, Bijan with a block, Ritter looking for space, it's a nice run. Could have gone to Bijan with that. I really wanted to get outside. I thought we had it, but kind of forced to go back in. Second and six. Could have sworn I called for a run there. Guess I hit the wrong button. Here's Bijan. Not really anywhere to go. Tried to juke back, didn't register. And now it's third and six. This would be a bold time to run the ball, but we really have him spread out. I don't want it to be read option though. We're actually gonna get out of that and we're gonna snap the ball. Who wants to get open? We're throwing a Kyle Pitts up the seam, knocked down by Epps. Oh man. Sometimes you just gotta trust your best players. Couldn't get it to Pitts. Something else could have been open. Did not really even check. I saw Kyle Pitts, thought he had enough space. Nope. And Josh Jacobs, by the way, is in the zone. We need a TFL to knock him out of it. That might be easier said than done here. They're gonna pitch it to him. Caden Nellis is there. That actually should be the TFL. Did they lose a yard? That's the end of the first quarter either way. Third and eight for the Raiders as we're gonna switch sides of the field. Not been a great start for us. We have five passing yards and six rushing yards. I think we have to give the ball to Bijan Robinson more. More Bijan. They have 100 more total yards than we do. Get the football back here on a punt. Show me something, Cordero. Blocks actually looks like they could, they could be shaping up pretty nicely here. Went inside there. Outside would have been better. But I'm just not sure that he has the speed to really get to the corner like we used to be able to see from him. Only 87 speed. That just is extremely slow. But Raiders still with a ton of momentum. We got to take it back and we got to run the football. Trust Bijan Robinson. If we can get three, four, five yards a run, I mean, we're going to get a first down every time. And that might involve going for it on fourth and short if we only get uh, three yards every time. But we would get it if we got three yards every time, so there w there's that. It didn't even get close to that there. I think if we tried to cut that to the outside, they had the angle, it wouldn't have been good for us. But third and six is not what I want to see. But inside zone here, potentially four down territory. If we can make this close, we're going to run the ball. Bijan, change the direction, use that power! And we move the chains, first and 10. Maybe running in the direction of Max Crosby is not what we want to do. But I, am I just being a little bit too conservative right now? I might be. Maybe it wouldn't be the worst idea to try and bounce some of these to the outside. See if we can start moving the chains because right now it is slow and not steady as once again, Ritter cannot find Madsen. How are we missing throws this badly? This is brutal. I mean, it would have been two really nice plays to the rookie tight end. He's missed on both of them. Missed on both of them. Here we go. Third and eight. Pitts. Sideline. Toe drag. Got it. First. No, he didn't. They're calling him out of bounds? We're going to take a look at this and decide whether to use our challenge flag or not. I thought for sure we had Pitts on the corner. We had a nice little clear out there from Donovan Peoples-Jones. Ritter hit him pretty much on the break. And Pitts got the left foot maybe just out of bounds. Really? I mean, it's so close. I'm not sure that there's enough to overturn it. But I think it's worth throwing the challenge flag on when the alternative is fourth and eight and we'd have to punt. So we lose a timeout if we're wrong. It probably is not going to be overturned. But I think it's at least 
close enough where it's worth it to challenge. Now, it is Madden. That logic probably goes out the window as this is not going to be overturned. We lose a challenge, and we'll have to punt the football back to the Raiders. Still searching for it on offense. I thought we found it. Pretty incredible that Kyle Pitts managed to get out of bounds there without catching the football. But it's a pretty good punt. And I didn't, I didn't down it. I, I thought it was going to go on the one. Now it's not a good punt. What was the difference there between the one and the three or the two? Touch the ball. Oh, God, that's a, that's a big mistake for me. Although, to be fair, anytime when we pin them inside the, the three, they just get a 90-yard play. So maybe better that they're starting from the 20. Get the edge. We didn't do it again. Ah, all right. We got to settle in here. Don't get discouraged. We're a play or two away. That's all it is. A play or two away. Got to keep that mentality. And Mike Hughes on Devontae Adams feels bad. We got torched. They didn't look at him. Said find Hunter Renfro on the sideline. Third down for the Raiders. I actually don't know if I love where Clark Phillips is lined up. I feel like that action's to the other side of the field. But Jimmy G's under pressure. Somebody's got to get to him. Emma Katie brings him down. Jimmy G nearly with the throw away, but Arnold Ebikady had other ideas. That'll force a punt by the Raiders, and it's nice to get pressure. He nearly got that throw away off, but at least somebody's getting back to Jimmy G, bringing him down, and the offense will take the field. I love it, but the offense has to do something. It's got to be more Bijan. I know I said that last time. It didn't really work out with a couple of runs. We were forced to pass, and then somehow did not manage to convert but it's got to be more Bijan we got to find more space to run the football and we're going to go power run here three tight end set Janu Smith on the field and we need blocks there's Bijan still on his feet that's a first down maybe his best run of the day more Bijan again there's a crease we're going to actually cut it back though and just take the 10 or so yards it's another first down for Bijan Robinson and we're starting to find some rhythm. Tyler Algier going to come into the game. I think we're actually going to run the ball to him as well. Again, Jumbo, three tight end set. Let's cut it to the outside. Great block from London. Tried to cut it to the outside. I didn't have my cut it to the outside back. And Algier actually might be hurt on the play. That's not good. That is not good at all. We should have just stayed inside, taken the guaranteed yardage. But here's Bijan. There's a crease. Marcus Epps can't make the tackle. Bijan stiff arming and finally brought down at the 16. Our run game is coming alive here in the second quarter. That's a two minute warning. Hopefully, Algiers okay. As we're going to go ahead and try to punch this thing in. And Bijan Robinson is also in the zone. Huge for Bijan. Let's get him out in the open field. There is a flag. Bijan making guys miss. That should be a first down. This could be roughing the passer, though. And that's exactly what the call is going to be. It's going to be 15 yards, automatic first down, and a half the distance to the goal, actually, because we ended up on the three. So we're pretty much at the one-and-a-half-yard line now. And I think we're going to trust Bijan Robinson. Up the middle, Bijan stopped at the one. Tried to showcase that power. Ended up being just short. Looks like Algiers okay. Let's go two clock. And we'll, we'll bring this down closer to one minute so the Raiders have less, uh, less time to answer. I wish we could just do a quick audible to a QB sneak because we have it easily. But the trap works to perfection. Algier just barely into the end zone. He gets enough. And uh, fantasy owner's mad. <laughs> the Vulture. Which would be Tyler Algier's nickname. Did it in week one. And uh, here in week one in real life against the Raiders this time, as it's 2024, does it again to Bijan. But Bijan got stuffed, so can't really blame Algier. Brought it back to a one possession game, down by just three. If we can keep the Raiders off the scoreboard to end this first half, we're going to be in business. And that's what we have to do. A minute and 10 seconds. Raiders are in a great spot, though. Three timeouts, and they need a 75-yard drive. They have Josh Jacobs, who's crushing it today. They have Devontae Adams. I don't know. What do we do? Do we just blitz the hell out of Jimmy G? I mean, I like that idea. Make him get rid of the football quickly, and we're going to press. 
of course. When you blitz, I think it's a good idea to have those guys pressed. Second and inches. Dropping back. Throw over the middle. Popped up into the air. And incomplete. No one can get to it. Sean Humphreys ended up being pretty close. But lunged at the ball and was not really even close to it. Third and inches. Do you run the ball here if you're at Las Vegas? I would consider it. Still have another timeout. And you don't want it to be fourth and inches because then you're pretty much going to have to punt. Quick throw to the outside. And that is a first down. 31 seconds from the logo. Raiders still with a timeout. And they're going deep. But incomplete. Are they going to settle for a field goal? I don't think they're going to run out of this formation. Even though it obviously would look like it. Pass complete to Myers. They still have one timeout left. They're not calling it. Which I think works to our benefit. There's just seven seconds left in the half. This might be the final play. Quick throw. Keep him up. And that is the end of the first half. The Raiders don't even end up with three. I guess they didn't feel confident in that distance to kick a field goal. But they didn't really show a sense of urgency. No timeout. No attempt. Just a quick out for basically nothing. And they get a few more yards. Congratulations. You're only up by three, even though they pretty much dominated most of this game so far. Okay, we get the football to start the second half. Perfect position to either tie or take the lead. Don't want to screw this up. Got to make the most of it. And Cordero can only return it back to the 20. Desmond Ritter will retake the field. But it's really not about number nine. It's about number seven. Got to get the ball in the hands of Bijan Robinson. And actually, if he could clear out here, DPJ, and leave Bijan wide open, that would be perfect. And that was nearly intercepted. So let's not do that again. Ritter just 18 yards passing. I mean, I like the idea of that play. So much so that we're going to run something really similar. Except leave DPJ with uh, where he is. And check down to Kyle Pitts, who turns a corner and picks up the first down. And tragedy has struck in Las Vegas. Number seven is down. I repeat, number seven is down. Bijan Robinson going to jog to the locker room. It is a non-contact injury. Thankfully, he is jogging to the locker room and not limping or being carted off. Hopefully just a stinger or something. Hopefully not a broken forearm. And it's going to be Tyler Algier's game. And he's going to make the most of this opportunity. First down for Algier. Patterson into the game now. We throw it to him. Get it down the sideline. Finding Cordero Patterson. Ritter with the throw of the game. Inside the 10 now. And this offense is really starting to click. Great throw from Ritter. Has missed a couple in this game. Finds the versatile Patterson for 45 down the sideline. Linebacker in coverage. Even though Patterson's lost a step. Still had a step on the backer. And it's a bruised sternum for Bijan. He is ruled out. Well, that is tough. It really is going to be Tyler Algier's team at the moment. We're still going to run the football. He's got a touchdown already in this one. He, he, we might need another from him. I can't believe that. So, bruised sternum is not anything serious here. It's basically Madden's answer to the concussion. Because they can't have concussions in the game anymore. Because the NFL doesn't like it. Jock. But uh, that's that's what that is. I, dude, my RB still does not work on this controller really well. So we're not going to throw to it. DPJ! Just shy of the end zone. Down to the one. I was really hitting RB trying to uh, hot route. RB's not even on the field. Actually, it is on the field. I'm, I'm hitting it. There we go. Only took four attempts. We're going to go ahead and run. Up the middle. Algier fighting and short again. Justin Whitfield on the stop. Rookie at UCLA, and we are going to go for it. I like it. They are offensive lines better than your defensive line. Show me what you got, Tyler. Run up the middle. Algier looking for space and can't get in. Oh, we got no push from the O-line. Obviously not going to bounce that outside. It's halfback dive. And we just couldn't get the push. And now the Raiders get the football on their own one. I like the idea to go for it. I would do it again. 
I like the call from the OC. Just didn't work out for us. As Jacob's looking for space and finds enough. He's wrestled down, but a gain of six. To run, get to the outside. Nice tackle from Terrell. That's how you do it. Third and three. I think we are going to blitz again. We're going to press. And again, we're going to say, I think we can make a play. I don't know if you can. Here we go. Blitzing, quick throw, and it's intercepted by Mike Hughes. This could be six, and it is. Mike Hughes pick six. Jimmy G blunder right on schedule. Thank God they don't bring in Aiden O'Connell. Thank God it's still Jimmy G as Jimmy G, classic mistake, has thrown the ball to the other team. Looking for Hunter Renfro, finds Mike Hughes, and this guy was an electric playmaker for us on special teams, now making plays on defense, and gives us the lead. It'll be 14-10 pending the extra point. Let's go. First turnover made by either team in this one, and a critical one. Humphreys trying to get in the backfield. And I think really did make that play. Kind of forced Jacobs right into Frankie Luvu. But obviously that won't show up on the stat sheet. It's a nice play. But uh, Frankie Luvu credited with the TFL there. Second and 11. Dropping back into coverage. And wow, Okuda just gave Hunter Renfro about 30 yards of space. Renfro must have told him he was claustrophobic. And Okuda, respectful as he is, gave Renfro all the space he needed. I mean, this has got to be a run here. I'm trying to get to the run commit up the middle. If they pass... Oh, it's an RPO! No! AJ Terrell, please! He saves the touchdown. I don't mind that. I think on third and short there, when we've struggled to, to stop Josh Jacobs, committing to something is not the worst idea. But they were running an RPO, and of course, Jimmy G made the correct move. Threw it out to the flat. And uh, made a really nice play. And now Frankie Lubu's injured. Well... That's a big loss. Probably our biggest and best free agent signing. Now jogging to the locker room, holding his arm, much like Bijan was. I wonder if that's a bruised sternum, despite the sternum being your chest. Give me a pick. Throw into the end zone. Terrell intercepts it. Jimmy G oh, with another turnover. Full momentum for Atlanta. I thought that might have been six. I thought Devontae Adams cooked him. Terrell got his hands up, took the football away. What a play from our CB1. Oh, that might save us the game. Here's a look at our draft class. If you missed it, we focused a lot in the trenches, and it's a dislocated shoulder for Frankie Luvu. That's a tough injury. We'll get a timeline on that after the game. But the rookie from Alabama... He was a late round draft pick, John Graves, forced into action. That, that is a tough loss for us. We've been killed by injuries. We're going to give Drake London a chance. Got the ball out in front. He's never going to get picked there, but London couldn't track it down. But I don't mind the throw there from Ritter. I think that was actually okay. London just not quite enough speed to track that down. Here's third and ten. This is looking a lot like a punt right now. Please let me hit RB. Mm. Get it to London! Ritter under pressure. That would be the highly touted top 10 pick in 2023 out of Texas Tech, Tyree Wilson. Applying the pressure. And we'll have to punt the football back. So the interception actually doesn't turn into much for us. And here's John Graves now on punt trying to make a play down the field and he does but now he's going to be playing defensive end for us or will it be d'angelo malone might be d'angelo malone here he's on the field right now but we have a couple of different packages we will probably see john graves in a pass rush spot for frankie luvu here in this one but not right now still going to be d'angelo malone that's a big loss a couple of big injuries in this one already not what you want obviously and Josh Jacobs continues to run wild. We might want to bring in Puna Ford. We're running a lot. Oh my God, please let me hit RB. We're running a lot of like what looks to be a 3-4. It's 4-3 even. So in the even front, 
we're basically bringing everybody down. And we're having non-defensive tackles essentially be in defensive tackle roles. Which is not what you want. Couldn't cover everything there. Or anything, turns out. We need another Jimmy G blunder. It's a nice play by D'Angelo Malone on the backside of that run to catch up to Josh Jacobs. Gonna be second and eight. Maybe see one more play before the end of the third quarter. We'll see if they even decide to snap it. Braves into the game. And no snap by the Raiders. So we're going into the fourth quarter with a four-point lead. Raiders have played pretty well. Very similar rushing numbers, but I, I feel like it's just because Josh Jacobs doesn't have the attempts. He's crushed us on the ground today. We've really not been able to, to hold him back. It's been a lot of big plays. And we're going to need one on defense. I form, not going to run. And we just left the fullback wide open. But under pressure is Garoppolo. And look who it is. John Graves dragging Garoppolo to his grave. Massive play to force third and long. Thank you, John Graves. That was huge. That was a huge play. And that's why we bring him out on the field. Speed and pass rush ability. He's going to be a star for us. Jimmy G going to scramble. We're going after him. Humphreys brings down Garoppolo. Should be his second sack of the game. They're going to call it one and a half. And that's another TFL. We got aggressive. We left our responsibility wide open. Jimmy G couldn't get to him as he was rolling out. And of course, even if he did manage to complete that pass, right, I think we would have been able to wrap up and make the tackle short of the line to gain. It was third and long. So we took a calculated risk. It pays off. The Raiders will punt on fourth and impossible. And we'll try to get a nice return here with Patterson. Don't return it like that. Oh, God. I mean, it would have gone out probably around there anyway if he didn't catch it. But uh, he goes out right at the four. And now we have another uphill battle. But we got that fullback. George Espinosa, clear the way. Change of direction from Algier. Tyree Wilson's too athletic. And that's why you don't try to take it outside. I wasn't being too conservative earlier. I was being smart. And I guess I stopped that. Let me go dive here. Jesus. I, I might need a new controller. Oh, Algier. Plenty of space. Look at that run. And there is an injury. It is the rookie tight end out of Utah, Neil Madsen, holding his chest. That could be a bruised sternum. He is jogging to the locker room. These have been some tough injuries. Everyone hates the injuries. Injuries happen in the NFL. We've already seen it, unfortunately. Nick Chubb, right? A, a number of others, but he's a big one recently. I mean, Trevon Diggs just tore his ACL. So injuries should be in the series. It, it does suck. But it is part of the game. We're going to throw on the run. Pitts makes no effort to catch the ball. Dive. Do something. Bruce Sturdum. Neil Madsen is done for the day as well. It's going to be third and five. John o. Smith taking over tight end two duties. And we might actually make an adjustment to put maybe Quez Watkins at slot receiver. Or even Rashid Shahid. And... Just Kyle Pitts is going to play just traditional tight end with the injury to Madsen. Third and five. We're dialing up a screen. They never saw it coming. Patterson juke back. That's a first down. That's nice. Okay. Time to take time off the clock. We need first downs. We can't really go like total two clock right now. I mean, we're going to try. But, you know, I feel like they could get stops rather easily when Max Crosby is living in the backfield. Just completely bitches Caleb McGarry. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be just tough to run out the clock the way we want to. He's in the zone now. What does that mean? Uh relentless is that ability. Rush moves no longer cost points. So he's just gonna be counter move after counter move after counter move. Check down to Algier. We lose two. It's third and sixteen. We're gonna try another screen. Max Crosby hopefully doesn't read it well. And we get it out to Patterson. He's got space. Cordero having a big day as a receiver. Another first down for the Falcons on third down. Huge conversion. Patterson letting him know about it. Just tapping Marcus Epps continually on the helmet. Oh, man, I love that. 
three catches for 74 yards for Patterson. Didn't really know if he was going to play much today. And now, not only is he playing a lot, he's making a huge impact with a couple of injuries. Second and seven, working off play action. Throw to the flat. It's Jonu Smith. Nice catch. Third and inches. Oh, man, that was dicey. I really wanted to stretch the field on that, but I just didn't really see the opportunity to. And 45, it's four down territory, clearly, but it's third and inches. We just got to get across. And that's going to be it. Algier, actually. It's even more. And Tyree Wilson now down for the Raiders. So they get to, to stop the clock without using a timeout. Seems kind of BS. Second and seven. We're going to work off play action. Wes Watkins wide open. He's going to catch the football, and he fumbles, but out of bounds. Wes Watkins' day is done. Thank you for playing. You can't fumble your second touch out of bounds. Cannot do it. Rashid Shahid going to take his place. And Cordero Patterson takes the place while you're in the backfield. We're going to give him the football. He's got space up the middle. Cordero Patterson gets the first down and a little bit more. That takes us to the two-minute warning, and this is a fantastic drive to ice things here in Las Vegas. This will be a huge road win. It's 14 to 10. Still plenty of time left. We got to punch it in. We need a touchdown. Here we go. Algier with enough space. Only gets one. We're going to go back to him on second and nine. Oh, big power. Going to make it third and short. Second timeout used by the Raiders. Now it's third and three. Let's actually flip this so Jonu Smith is the one that comes in motion. Better blocker. And here is Wham. And Algier is stopped. Fourth and one from the four. What do we do? A field goal obviously makes it a touchdown game. Do we think they can stop us? I think we go for it. I think we stay aggressive. It's week one. I think you go for the win here. And a first down gives us the win. Is essentially what it comes down to for me. And a touchdown wins the game. I don't want the Raiders to have an opportunity to tie and force OT. We want to end it here. Here's the run. Algier up the middle, and it pays off. He finds the end zone for the second time today, and that could do it. We get aggressive. Algier cashes in on an opportunity, finds the end zone again. That's a massive touchdown. I mean, it cannot be overstated. Going up 21 to 10. Now the Raiders have no timeouts. They're going to need two touchdowns or a field goal and a touchdown and a two-point conversion. The Raiders are in a bad spot. No way around it. I think you got to be aggressive there. I know we would have been flamed if it didn't work, but I think you got to be aggressive. It is one yard. We are a power run team. We got to show that we can move the ball in those spots. Even without Bijan, we still have our power back in Tyler Algier. Got to trust him. And uh, we did, and it paid off. And we're, we're giving them these throws over the middle, by the way. They have no timeouts. They're down by multiple possessions. If they want to throw over the middle, more power to them. What we don't want to do is that. Let them get out of bounds, because that stops the clock. We don't want that to happen at all. They can score a touchdown. I'm not really too concerned about that. I know we've allowed onside kicks in the past. Only as far back as the last game we played in the postseason. So we don't want that. But we're going to protect the outside here. We're going to space our guys out. And we're going to let them throw over the middle if they want to. That's totally fine with me. Takes more time off the clock. And they're going to have a minute here to score twice still. Over the middle. I mean, we're probably allowing too many of these. I'm gonna spike here? Nope. I don't know why they would. I don't know why I thought that. And down goes Garoppolo. Brady Jarrett with a potential game-ending sack. Massive play. Garoppolo clearly looking for Adams when we took that away. He just throws it away. 22 seconds to score twice. I mean... You probably at some point want to at least consider a field goal. Like, if it's fourth down, I think you probably should just take the field goal. But there's no point now. Five seconds to play. They need a miracle. Throwing to the end zone. And that pass is dropped in the end zone. AJ Terrell got beat. 
and not hurt. The reason I say consider a field goal, well, you know, if it's like, if it's fourth down from like the 30, you need two scores anyway. Like, you, you got to leave some time on the clock. You need the onside kick either way, so it doesn't really matter. You know, you want to take guaranteed points when you can get them, but uh, obviously here... You know, it, it was basically an impossible task. And that is a really nice win for us here in week one. Algier ends it. And we are 1-0. and oh. A nice 21-10 to 10 win over the Raiders without Bijan Robinson for the majority of this game. Without Frankie Luvu in clutch time. Without our first pick in this draft, Neil Madsen, for uh, a decent part of this game as well in the second half. So... I think we did a really good job of fighting through adversity and making plays. Yeah, the passing numbers were not good. 10 for 19 for 145, no touchdowns, but no picks. It's a Desmond Ritter game. It is a Desmond Ritter true to life game in the Falcons offense. Rushing, Algier goes 18 for 63, couple of touchdowns. Bijan, 9 for 60, averaging 6.6 .6 per carry. Did break a tackle as well. Jacobs broke eight, averaged six per carry. He's very good. And then receiving, I thought our defense actually did a pretty good job. I think a lot of it was Jimmy G just holding onto the football for too long. And then Cordero Patterson is our offensive MVP, I think. I was really impressed by him. He, he made plays when he, we needed plays to happen. A big first down on the ground, you know, 12-yard pickup was nice. Three huge catches, 74 yards, averaging nearly 25 yards per catch. Quez Watkins fumbling made me really annoyed. And Kyle Pitts didn't do a whole lot. But when you only have 10 completions and five of them are, or six of them are to running backs and Jonu Smith, of course, caught the ball like basically out of the backfield, we just don't really stretch the field. I didn't feel like we had the time against the Denver, excuse me, against the uh, Raiders pass rush. So I, I feel pretty good about how this game went. You know, a lot of these games are going to be gritty. Deshaun Humphreys with two TFLs, one and a half sacks. That's a debut. Heck of a debut. Grady Jarrett with a sack. John Graves as well. Arnold Ebicady. More pressure than we usually get. And then two picks. Mike Hughes went for six. AJ Terrell got one as well to save a touchdown. Huge game for us. I really feel like that's the type of gritty game I'm looking for a lot of the time. Where, you know what? Weren't a ton of explosive plays. But the big plays felt really rewarding when we got them. 21-10. It was a gritty, hard-fought win. But we got it done. We may be playing on Sunday, but every day is hump day. When you're watching the Atlanta Falcons hump, Deshaun Humphreys, what a game for the rookie. And that is a big scenario goal completion. We didn't get 200 on the ground, but I, I thought we played really well, as I mentioned earlier. And here we go. Camp standout. Let's discuss hump day. Deshaun Humphreys. I told you I'm here to be great, coach. I'm not going to waste any opportunities, so keep them coming, and I promise you won't regret it. Well, I'm glad you said so, because this is going to be big for our team. We've been doing great, but the key now is being able to do it week in, week out. The stars of this league aren't just good a few games a year. They do something special each week, and it's 10,000 XP for the rookie linebacker. No dev trade upgrade yet. We could get one. We still don't know what his depth rate is. Maybe it is Superstar X-Factor. Probably isn't it. It's probably just Star. Could be Superstar. And a Bijan. Oh, hey. How you feeling? Weren't able to have the success that we had planned for, but getting the win is a good way to temper the disappointment. Well, why do you think that happened, Bijan? Let's have a round table. Let's discuss this. Oh, it's because you left the game. But it's not your fault. Everyone gets banged up. Hook them horns. Love you, Bijan. 1,000 XP for the team. Plus five staff points. We'll take the win. We're not going to be mad about a win. Just because we didn't run for 200 doesn't mean we have anything to be upset about. But week two, week three, I don't love the teams we're facing. Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. And the Philadelphia Eagles, who we saw last in the NFC Championship. And let's just say, you didn't watch the game. We didn't go to the Super Bowl in that one. So that is going to do it for, the week, or for week one. Uh, massive performance from Deshaun Humphreys. He actually has two skill point upgrades and he's on the verge of securing another 5,082 XP out of 5,456 required to go up. And his dev trait nearly going to be revealed, by the way. Hit power could be better for sure. 
Lock shedding could be better. I talked about coverage. I'm going to do that at least once here, maybe even twice. He's up to a 75 overall. It's only going to be coverage. Tackle by one. We're going to do pass coverage again. Still staying at a 75 overall. They just not value pass coverage. Plus one to man, plus three to zone. Still think those are big upgrades. Zone coverage at 70. I'd like to get man into the 60s at least. I really would. But he's looking good. Could be looking better. And uh, we probably could have had him at like a 78, 79 overall by now, which would be incredible. But we've decided to go pass coverage for these upgrades. Don't regret it, but you know, it'd be nice if we could get that overall to boost up just for appearances sake. And that's going to do it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.